Harry Potter. The boy who lived. Come to die. Avada Kedavra! Psych, not dead yet. Ah! Technically, I am the master of that wand after I disarmed Draco, after he disarmed Dumbledore. Uh, even though you killed Snake, but and Snake killed Dumbledore, but Draco disarmed him first. So technically, I'm the master of that wand. I've also had the Resurrection Stone, and I own the Invisibility Globe. Technically, the film doesn't say that my cloak is the cloak from the Deathly Hallows, but uh, the books say it is. So, yes, my cloak is the one from the Deathly Hallows legend. And I had the stone earlier, and the one technically belongs to me. Uh, well, I'm technically its master, so I am the master of death, Voldemort. Or should I say, Tom Riddle. Master of death. <laughs> he is the chosen one. It's over. It's over. And I feel extremely emotional. <sighs> Better go and put this back in Dumbledore's tomb or in his office. <laughs> Imagine if I snapped this in half. That would be silly. <laughs> no, I'm going to prepare my actual one first. That should have happened in the film, by the way. That, that I didn't mention this in the review. That should have happened. Should have used the Elder one to fix his actual wand. Yeah, anyway. Off I go. Enjoy the review. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my review of Harry Potter and The Deathly Hallows Part 2, the eighth and final Harry Potter film um, based on the seventh book Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, well the second half of the film adaptation of that uh, following from Part 1 and this one is a very different uh, film to Part 1. Um, well, each film is kind of different in their own way, but parts one and two feel pretty different, considering they were filmed at the same time, uh, filmed and edited at the same time, and they're pretty much the same story. Mm, I, just, I like the smell of suitcases. Um, but this one is still pretty different, and I think that might be an intentional... And that might be intentional on the filmmakers, which is good. Um, okay, uh, as I mentioned a few times, this is my second favourite film of all time. Um, I do have a few nitpick and, nitpicks and problems, but that's mostly with the story. As a film, it's perfect. It's a perfect film. As an adaptation of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, 
chapters 25 to 36 plus a bit of 24 um the very end of 24 was at the end of part one as was the dobby funeral bit um so parts of 24 and part one parts of 24 and part two anyway uh so parts of 24 and chapters 25 to 36 plus the 19 years later in part two um as an adaptation of that it's um well, it's still a brilliant adaptation. They're all brilliant adaptations, but I think this time round we have got a few slight issues that we do need to address. Uh, for starters, the second half of the climax, um, there are some changes from the books that don't quite fit. Um, most notably the Voldemort's death. Whilst it is a pretty great um, death for film, the I, think I would have liked Harry to explain to Voldemort a bit more about uh, the Elder Wands Allegiance. He started to on the top of the tower and then he grabbed him round and he had that really cool bit where they fall down to the courtyard uh, fly down to the courtyard but then he doesn't tell Voldemort the rest of it he then tells Ron and Hermione it and I, w I would have liked Harry just to pretty much address Voldemort this not as much as in the book because in the book there is a lot of exposition there is a lot of information that works great for page but for the screen it would take a long time um, but I think the basics pretty much what we saw uh, in what, uh, as Harry was about to tell Voldemort, and what he was saying to Ron and Hermione, plus maybe a little bit more to elaborate, and I think that would have been perfect. Um, plus, the death itself, looked, again, looked visually great, but character-wise, I think it would have been better if they stuck to the original death. Um, where just Voldemort just falls onto the ground dead, showing that he does some, there is some sort of humanity there. Um, he is still a person. Well, I say humanity, and he is a per, uh, showing that there is some a person still. Uh, he is still a person. Um, as, as the line was that Tom Riddle fell to the ground dead, and I think that would have been a good one. Although uh, you do have the question of uh, where do you put the body uh, afterwards? At least here you don't have that uh, dilemma. And then Harry snaps the Elder Wand after telling Ron and Hermione what happened, and I don't really like. That's the bit I like the least. I don't really like that. I would have preferred it if he left it in Dumbledore's office or back at the tomb. Um, but, yeah, it was just, it was just some minor quads. And also the final uh, score tra track at the very end of the film makes me really emotional and really sad. Uh, this is at the very end of the credits. And I think they should have gone very bombastic with the final, uh, uh, final uh, instrumental track because it's a pretty... It's a, uh, it's a the track that they have makes me feel very sad. It's finished. It's all over. And I, I don't want to feel that. I, I, I mean, I am sad it's over, but I want to go out feeling extremely happy because although it's in, it's over, it was a great, it's a great experience watching these films, especially this one. So I would have liked something a bit more happy and upbeat like some of the other ones. Um, or something, a bombastic version of Hedwig's theme, basically a bit like with Star Wars Episodes 3 and 6, having a big bombastic version of the Star Wars theme. Um, I'm hoping Episode 9 will have the biggest and most bombastic version of that theme when that comes out. So if there is a film adaptation or adaptations of Cursed Child, if, if they're going to do it, if they do a two-part one, which I think would be logical because like Deathly Hallows, you don't want to do a four-hour uh, film. But if they were to do Cursed Child, the end of that film or films if it's two um they should have a bombast and there's no more planned after that uh what well, harry potter ones anyway big bombastic hedwig's theme at the very end and same for fantastic beasts five big bombastic fantastic uh beasts theme at the end of that film um like I said, it, it, this is a nitpick and it's not it doesn't really affect the film but i just think they should have had a happier track to end the final couple of minutes uh, final couple seconds of the film on because it just made me really sad. Um, quite a lot of the emotion does come from uh, other pieces of the film, and I think the film exceeds in quite in many places. Um, but I would have liked a bit more of a happier final instrumental track at the very end of the credits. Um, okay, going on back, go to the uh positives this film is a masterpiece apart from the few problems that i and a couple of other fans have had and some of the other changes in the uh from the books being a bit awkward um but besides that it's a really great film uh fantastic performances from our leads i don't know whether this or part one is their best it's all order of the phoenix for daniel radcliffe 
Um, although I think Emma Watson and Rupert Grint best performances are either in this film or in part one. Um, although I did love uh, Watson's in Half Blood Prince. Um, it's a great performance. I think everybody is on the ball here. Everyone hits the nail on the head. It's fantastically written, besides possibly the very last couple of scenes uh, with the changes from the books. A couple of other changes around uh, along the way. Some of them not too bad. Some of them mm, a bit awkward. Uh, but the ones I've already talked about are the ones that I've, I mainly have the issue with. Uh, <laughs> Um, not so, not too much of an issue. I mean, I'm not going to go all over them as some people uh, might, but enough. I, I think my me bringing them up would be um, would be enough. Uh, but I think bringing them up would uh, let me say my piece on them. Um, also, the 19 years later would have liked a capital Y and a capital L for the 19 years later. Uh, 19 years. Um, I'll have to check. I didn't actually check what it is in the book. Hold on. Okay, after a quick check, it is... Uh, there are capitals at the start of each word, although it does... It is the word 19 instead of the number 19, whilst in the film it's the number 19. And then the words years later, although the year, the Y and the L, for at the beginning of both words, are lowercase for some reason. I would have preferred them in capitals. But anyway, that, that's a nitpick as well. So yeah, fantastic film. Uh, fantastic acting from everyone. Um, well done. Um, be take all day to go through everybody and an actual proper look on line. Um, fantastic cinematography, fantastic editing, visual effects, practicals, absolutely amazing. The story is brilliant. Like I said, the only problems I really have is when they ch have major changes from the books. I actually think the boathouse is actually a better place for them to meet because the... Um, in the book, they go uh, for where Voldemort meets Snape. In the book, they go to the Shrieking Shack, which we've seen in uh, in Prisoner of Azkaban. And I don't think that was that's a very tight space. Um, whilst going to the boathouse um, is a bit better, it allows us a bit more space for all the characters. Um, plus, um, also intro introduces a new element of the castle we've not seen before, uh, at least not uh, properly. The Battle of Hogwarts is also handled extremely uh, brilliantly, although I would have liked to have seen a bit more fighting, a little bit more battles in places. It, uh, what we do see is absolutely brilliant and some really great uh, creature designs thrown in there. My favourite bit of the film, which is the scenes that get me extremely emotional, is actually the, um, the scene where Snape pretty much where he gives Harry his after giving Harry his tears with his memories after a really great death scene and I can actually uh, I can I love the emo the reactions of Harry, Ron and Hermione even though they at this point they still think Snape's the bad guy they kind of feeling sorry for him uh, at his death scene which is a it's great how he's killed Voldemort sort of I think he slits part of his neck or, or his chest or something he slits something and then has sets Nagini on him and it's a bit brutal even though if we don't see Nagini physically attack well even if we don't see an actual shot of Nagini attacking Snape we just see the snake and then the thumps against the side it's actually still pretty brutal um but that was an amazing scene some amazing emotion that wasn't my favorite scene after a really quick sad scene where we see a couple of bodies uh, a couple of people have died some really emotional bits like I said it would have been a good thing to see a bit more battle so maybe I don't know if we saw them actually dying in their pages of the books but or if they were off page <laughs> or, or a book term i devised off screen but certainly i think it would have been great to see um these guys do a bit more action it there was some great bits though so that's cool and then we see harry looking into the pensieve with snape's memories and this is the favorite scene because it's uh, it's quite an important one, we, uh, as we see Snape has always loved Harry's mother Lily, and it starts off really nice with them getting on with each other, and this was a great thing in the book as well, um, they're getting on with each other, and then as time goes along they start to get a bit more separate as Lily uh, uh, starts getting with uh, James a bit more. It was a bit more complicated in the books, but I think the display of, uh, as it was here was fine. Um, I do have to say the Tor the Tor Professor Trelawney um, prediction was the wrong one. I think it, it should have been the one from Order of the Phoenix, not the one from Prisoner of Azkaban, because that one was a pretty much that was 
that was a prediction literally on the spot. Um, I think um, I think we should have had the one from Order of the Phoenix about the neither one uh, can live with whilst the other survives. How after after that, then we get to uh, the sad bit of this uh, half and where the emotions really start kicking in. And yeah, that's once again, we get a flashback to uh, Lily's death and Harry watching it. We get one or two of those in this film. Um, it's better handled than the last film. And, and it, yeah, it still it really pulls at the heartstrings, real, especially with, with uh, the understanding of Snape uh, being in love with Lily and him watching over Harry and soon reveals that he's actually a nice guy. He planned the death of Dumbledore, which is something that Harry should have told Voldemort. Uh, that was part of the conversation they had. Um, and, the, and the reveal of Harry as being a, a secret Horcrux. And yeah, the, the whole scene is an em emotional pull at the strength uh, tugs. And Alexander Desplat's score is perfect that scene it is so beautiful i prefer his part one score oh as an overall film score but part two has a fantastic score as well uh, as well as the scene he has a fantastic score with uh, lily's theme the statues track and of course the dragon flying thing and just an amazing uh score uh score for the film i think all eight films have a fantastic have fantastic scores um by the way this one is and this one's probably got the most emotional uh, apart from some deaths, a few death scenes in a, in the previous films. But besides them, this is probably the most emotional music, and it's just so amazing and so brilliant. Um, so to get it. <laughs> emotional. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about something more happy. Um, the Gringot stuff is absolutely brilliant. It's great to go into that, and, and I like how the first half an hour doesn't go anywhere near Hill Hogwarts. They're just planning. What they're going to do at Gringotts, and then they go to Gringotts and re recover one of the last Horcruxes. It's all done brilliantly. You'd be surprised that this bit is in this film because it's uh, they haven't got to Hog Hogwarts yet. They haven't got there. The first half an hour is basically uh, the next bit of the search, and then they go to Hogwarts. But you'd be forgiven of thinking that it's a part two, uh, part one couple of scenes. Uh, they they'd be scenes in part one because. Um, they haven't gone anywhere near Hogwarts just until when they get to Scotland on the dragon. Um, some really, really great uh, scenes then. Lovely shots. And and the shots where the camera spins around the characters when they're getting dressed. That is, that's that's brilliant. Not quite as good as the Avengers one a year later. Uh, and But I do love when we have cameras kind of spinning around the characters or, char or a character in in some cases when it's one when it's just one character but yeah it's just a brilliant it's just brilliant shots and yeah and it works really well here um just lots of fantastic scenes lots of fantastic moments it's just, i think they it all came together so well for this film the only problems i do have is the changes from the books especially in the climax but i can overlook those um when we're talking about this as a film, when talking about a story, I have to mention them, I have to bring them up um, as my main uh, of the, well, main issues of the ones I do have. But as a film, as a executed movie, which I think is more uh, sort of gives me a little bit more of the love feel of the film. Now, I'm, I, I've always loved this film, but I think over the time when I started thinking about some of these uh, issues with terms of the plot or with the adaptation of the of the book, uh, kind of maybe knock, potentially attempting to knock my uh, opinion of the film down. That was always something that was in danger of happening. However, um, looking at it as a film, that has kind of helped me can, can still keep it as my second favourite film of all time and my favourite film of this series. And just love it. Fantastic film. Oh, I, I just love it. I I can't really say much more. It's just... Just had such a great time. Just so good. I mean, yeah, it was amazing. Um, climax um, changes to the books aside and a few things I would have preferred and a few other nitpicks, but still just a bloody amazing. It's <sighs> awesome. Just some amazing, amazing scenes. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Um, 
Oh, and one other bit uh, I remembered. Uh, Hermione mentioned to Ron, uh, Ron brings up something Hermione said about the room requirement not being on the um, the Marauders map. Um, as she mentioned it, that it didn't, uh, the year before that it hadn't. Uh, that, was a, that didn't appear in Half-Blood Prince, the uh, film. Maybe in the book, but uh, in the film they don't say such a thing. So that's just something I wanted to bring up. Um, so yeah, that's about it for Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. The best film in the series. And, you know, I'm st I, I, I still can't believe we've got these last two films. I'm, I'm still... There's still part of me that is still stuck in 2009, late 2009 early to uh, pre -no or pre November 2010 where the fil the films are in production they haven't come out yet uh, there was there was a big trailer for both films in around June time but there's still part of me uh, at the time of getting into the series or just after completing the books and getting into the films but or in between uh, having watched the, the the first six films and before the seventh film came out and there's it's just me Thing it's a bit odd that we've got the last two. It's a bit odd that we've got the last two films based on the final book, and even more so with the second half, the, the second part. And um, still, still a bit of me that just <laughs> kind of surprised that we we've got them. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I'm back in my 2009-2010 mindset before the or 2010 2011 in the case of between films seven and eight. Um, I don't know, and but. It's been eight years since this film came out, so yeah, um, time has. So yeah, and it's a, it's amazing, and it ended on ended the franchise on a spectacular note, just like how the books ended. And I don't mean as a direct adaptation, of course. I mean, like I said, there is a several changes. There's a good couple of changes. Some of them I don't really particularly like or have issues with. Quite and for some fans. Do uh, have the same, but what I meant, uh, although I still love it, what I meant is that the film Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two ended the series on a outstanding light, just like how the Deathly Hallows book did, uh, which makes a lot of sense because it is the same story. Although um, Part One was also a fantastic start to this story, but I think Part Two has the best stuff apart from some really great character moments and stuff earlier on but regarding of how it wraps up the series it's outstanding and I, I would say the same for the books Deathly Hallows is probably the best story of all of the Potter books and that will go for both vers both books and adaptations although the better stuff is in this half of the uh, for the films it, the best stuff is in this one but that's okay because that this is the this is the last one and that means like the books it can wrap up the ser the film series on a outstanding final note and this is before cursed child or fantastic beasts were anywhere in sight this is just harry potter um what is the the seven books eight films um just just if it's just those both end them on a fantastic level so it honors me to give Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, a 10 out of 10. Besides a few nitpicks, some that are shared by other fans, some that are just me, my own. Um, some of, mostly, uh, only of them with the, and most of them are with the plot or how they really, or rather uh, what they changed from the book and what they should have done. Um, but it's still an outstanding film and it wraps up the series on a fantastic note, just like its book counterpart. Um, so... Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, fantastic way to end the series. And in film terms, this is the final chronological film in the series, unless, like I said, they decide to make a Cursed Child film or films. But until that happens, this is the final chronological film in the franchise. Um, they're now filling up prequels with Fantastic Beasts, and they'll probably get round to doing a Quidditch throughout the ages uh, film or film series that may hopefully 
um, maybe follow the events of Voldemort rising to power and end tying into Philosopher's Stone. So that's the Fantastic Beasts can tie into that. And then that can tie into Harry Potter. And then you've got the entire uh, series. And like I said, there may be some more future ones coming if they decide to do it. Or at least Cursed Child um, ones, uh, at the very least. Um, of course, that's uh, not confirmed as of 2019. It's just speculation at the moment. Same for anything, to, uh, any films with the names Quidditch throughout the ages. Just the Fantastic Beasts uh, 3, 4 and 5 are confirmed at the moment. Um, but, you know, it's fine. Uh, we can work our way there. So, yeah, that's it from Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. That brings me to this emotional ending. But before we wrap up, we have to talk about the 19 years, 19 years later, which, to be fair, was probably actually my favourite thing, my favourite part of the entire series. In the books, anyway. Um, I can't, I'm surprised I think that, possibly. But maybe it's because it's actually quite interesting to see what they could do in the future. And yes, there are snippets of it there are pieces of information and there are some stories and of course cursed child later down the line um and one short story about the quidditch world cup uh, of 2014 but um how interesting it would be uh, to see bits maybe not as a whole story maybe not as an entire book but maybe short stories um maybe possibly just some some short events maybe some nice short stories that would detail some just what's going on and um, that's nice but uh, but yeah, 19, the 19 year, uh, years later, being, it does miss out quite a bit of that um, epilogue. It's only four pages anyway. Um, it was a very good epilogue in the book. And here they, they basically focus on the uh, Harry and Albus bit, which is basically what Cursed Child's first scene um, pretty much does as well, to be honest. Uh, Cursed Child mostly follows that angle as well, maybe a bit more as, as in the film, but mostly follows that. And But it does wrap up the story absolutely beautifully my real only complaint is that the y and the l that starts years and later is not in capitals that's really my only problem and um, plus that i think they could have held held on that fantastic final shot a bit longer but um besides that absolutely fantastic and, um, and like i said i would have liked to a bit more seen a bit more but maybe they could save that for cursed child <laughs> uh, which is unlikely unless they do make it um, but you know, it, for what it is, it's still really good, and I, I really like the final scene as well. I uh, prefer the book version, but that one went into a bit more detail. We got a bit more personality, a bit more character traits. Um, but what we got here, that was this was really good as well. So, yeah, that's that, and that's it. That's the Harry Potter series done officially, and that's the final film in the Wizarding World chronologically, unless, like I said. They adapt uh, Cursed Child or do any after that, um, which isn't likely. And I think the earliest that it would come out could be 2026, which was 10 years after the uh, the play starts, 15 years after this film, which um, allows a 15 year gap between uh, for the actors. And it's uh, and I, I, I think Fantastic Beasts 5 is due for 2024. So that's two years after that. So. I, that's that's my and they can then do fan, uh, quidditch throughout the ages shortly after that um so i think 2026 would be the earliest time for a cursed child movie uh or the first of a curse of the of a two and the other one would be 27 uh meaning quidditch throughout the ages would probably come in 28 or 29 or 30 um unless they want to have a big gap but if it doesn't happen then deathly hallows part two is an outstanding way for the series to end and yeah so amazing <sighs> yeah that's it well i suppose it's only fair for me to say thank you for watching um i will be doing a harry potter film ranking and a wizarding world ranking on the on the retro channel and also do a very quick mini uh fantastic beasts mini ranking that may be updated each year on this channel because their reviews are on this channel and it'll probably get updated every uh, other, every couple of years when the films come out. Same, uh, each new film comes out. Same for the overall Wizarding World one. But uh, there will be definitely be a Harry Potter rank, ranking on the Retro channel soon. And a Fantastic Beasts mini ranking soon. And then I'm going to schedule the big overall Wizarding World um, 2001 to 2018 films. Um, 
ranking for September 30th to celebrate my 10th anniversary of starting to get into Harry Potter when I first read Philosopher's Stone, the book, chapters one to five, actually. I think that's the most chapters I've read, apart from when reading the short chapter, the very short chapters of Carte Blanche um, recently, uh, which is a James Bond novel. You can check out a review on the Retro channel. Um, but, 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 yeah, so I'll be celebrating um, 10 years of being a Harry Potter fan with the films, the overall Wizarding World films ranking up to 2018's Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Like I said, every other couple of years it will get updated. Um, but, yeah, but it's something to celebrate, that celebrates this uh, occasion like my Doc 2 The Idiot's Lantern review on the Hooniversals channel, which will have to be remade, but... Uh, it was originally intended to celebrate the anniversary. Anyway, so, like I said, that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. What an ending. Just, what a, what, what a fantastic movie. Oh, I love this movie. Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Nicholas Payne YouTube channel. Um, my special, the might have been cool to see a bit more, uh, um, it would have been good to also have seen a bit, it would have been good to see a bit more of the, um, and, but, um, besides that, some absolutely, emo uh, but besides that, some fantastic emotional, that that was a uh, something that I think all of uh, to me. Uh, well, I mean, not as a. I mean, um, if we ended on uh, that, then um, uh, but so it uh, so I have, but yeah, you but never mind, but. The boy who lived. We'll do that again. Look, oh, careful. It's not even that on either of those two breaking. Psych, not dead yet, and also technically, I own, and also technically, no, I've also had the Resurrection Stone, and I own the Invisibility Cloak, although the film doesn't address that, this, my cloak is the, the hallow, but, uh, so, I mean, technically the book, I mean, technically the film doesn't address that the cloak is, Technically, the film doesn't address the fact that technically, technically,
one second. Two, one, action. Cut. Yeah.